Hello you two, Mr. Mallon here, and we're going to be doing some PE today. And for our PE, our learning intention is to use movement and balance and evaluate its impact on our body. So how movement and balance affects us, affects our bodies. To do that, we're going to use our step to success. Number one, first step to success, copy and explore basic movements with clear control. So we're going to watch a Joe Wicks video in a little while. We're going to have a go at copying the movements and balances and exercises that he does. And we're going to use clear control. We're going to copy it as best as we can by using our body in a controlled way. And number two, I can use space well and negotiate space clearly. So when we say negotiate space, that basically means looking at the space around you and thinking about, is it safe? And does it give me enough space to do this exercise? So we need to plan ahead. If you're going to do an exercise where you might need to jump forwards or run forwards, you're going to need to think about a space which gives you enough room to move forwards and backwards. If you're going to do a space where you might need to jump up and down, you'll need to think about the space from the ceiling to the floor. Have you got enough space to jump up and down without bumping your head? So that's what we mean by negotiating space. And number three, I can describe the effect that exercise has on our body. So we're going to talk about that now, actually. Before we do that, Pause the video, open up the PU sheet which is underneath this video, and then hit play once you've got that ready. Okay, so hopefully you've got that PU sheet in front of you. It might be on the computer, or you might have printed it out. That's absolutely fine. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about our heart rate. Now, a heart rate is basically how quickly our heart beats. The heart is usually found just slightly to your left behind your chest, and if you put your hand on your chest just slightly to the left, you might be able to feel it beating. Now, right now, that heart is pumping blood all around your body. That blood is going to all the organs in your body, it's going to all of the muscles, and it's even going to your brain. So basically, the blood is the fuel that keeps all of those things working properly. I wonder how our heart rate will change after we've done exercise. I wonder if it gets slower or it'll get faster. So to do that, we're going to measure our pulse, which is basically our heart rate. One way of measuring your pulse is using an app on a phone. So if your mum or dad has a phone, they might have an app that they use. They just put their finger over the camera and they hold it there for a minute and it will tell them what their heart rate is. I haven't got one of those on my phone, so what I usually do is I do it the old fashioned way. There are three different ways that you can measure your pulse. So you can take your two fingers and then find the dip in your neck. So you can go on either side, but I'm going to go for this side. And there's usually a bit of a dip just here and if you just push very gently you might be able to feel a, your pulse which you can feel a beating that's your heart rate that's the blood pumping through your veins so that tells you how hard how quickly your heart is beating another way of doing it is taking your wrist taking your two fingers again and then you should be able to feel, hopefully you might be able to feel, perhaps two rods, or they, look, they feel like two rods in your wrist. These are called tendons. If you put your two fingers between those tendons and push gently, you might need to try different places on your wrist, but near the top, you might be able to feel your pulse. Or, if neither of those work for you, you can put your hand on your chest, slightly to your left, and feel your heartbeat there. It's not as accurate as the other two, but if you can't find your pulse using your fingers, it might be worth trying that. So I wonder which way works best for you. If you need a bit of time to find your pulse and give it a go, hit pause and hit play once you've found it. Okay, so hopefully everyone now has been able to find their pulse, which will tell us what our heart rate is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a minute timer on my phone. And once that minute is up, we're going to see how many times her heart has beat. So what I'd like you to do is find your pulse. If you need to pause the video to find it again, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so hopefully you've found your pulse. You might be finding it in your neck, in your wrist, in your chest. And when I say go, I'd like you to count how many times that you feel your heart beats or how many beats you feel in that minute. So count how many times you feel it. Okay, so when I say go, start counting. Ready, set, go.
stop. So I counted 68 beats. I wonder how many you counted. Okay, keep that number in your head. Or if you can't remember it, write it down on a piece of paper. Pause if you need to while you do that. And then hit play when you're ready. And now I'd like you to open up the sheet underneath this video. And I'd like you to have a go at writing down how many beats that you found in that first box. So you put your learning intention at the top and it will say my heart rate before exercise was and you're going to write the number in that box. So I'm going to write 68. So if I show you my computer, you can probably see there I've written my heart rate before exercise was 68 beats per minute or BPM. So you can write your number in that box. Just hit pause if you need to. Once you've done that, hit play when you're ready. Okay, right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you for a while and I'm going to hand you over to Joe Wicks. We're going to watch a Joe Wicks video. We're going to have a go at those exercises and once we've finished, we'll have a look at how our heart rate has changed. So enjoy the exercise and I hope you have fun with it and I'll see you after the video.